my discipline is psychology. So I can talk with some level of experience and expertise about how psychology evolved and how we have this movement now called, called the positive psychology movement. I was trained as a behavioral psychologist in the 1990s, but I was exposed through the program that I went to to all the different movements of psychology. And what I learned was that historically, when psychology started out in about the turn of the century, um, that there was not so much of an emphasis on pathology or the kinds of things that we talk about now, such as schizophrenia or depression um, or any number of uh, eating disorders or things like that. But there was a genuine interest in all things behavioral and all things human. Um, and so this discipline kind of arose out of philosophy and a group of scientists who said, you know, we really should start studying human beings, just as we study things that are biological. We have, a f we have fields of physics, we have chemistry. We should start studying human behavior as its own entity and its own discipline. But no one said, let's go look at why people are sad or why people um, are angry. There wasn't an emphasis on things that were negative at the beginning. But that emphasis on things that were negative actually arose after the turn of the century and we began to establish psychology not just as an area of study, but as a practice, as something that people could do to help people alongside physicians and um, other people who were working in the health sciences. So as you can imagine, there were people who actually then had something, had to have something to cure. There had to be some kind of problem that people would focus on to then eliminate or to reduce. So largely in association with World War I and World War II, out of those two major catastrophic world events, there arose a greater and greater emphasis and more and more practice of this field of psychology creating um, an actual professional discipline. Throughout this whole time, psychology was a very scientific process. There was largely a group of um, behaviorists who were kind of running the field of psychology itself. So there was very strict empiricism um, and scientific method. And then some people say that that was then replaced or at least um, countered with another movement, which was the cognitive psychology movement in the 1950s. But alongside that, there was this other small movement that people still talk about today, and you've probably heard of, called the humanistic psychology movement, which uh, maybe you've heard the term or the, the name Carl Rogers or Abram Maslow in the hierarchy of needs. What they argued was that psychology had focused way too much on a scientific and very cold method of studying individuals and had ignored all things that were about humanity, human potential, happiness, um, the aesthetics of life and the appreciation of art and music and literature and all these kinds of things. So that movement, which started in the 1950s, really had an influence on a lot of people, but it wasn't a scientific movement. Well, um, for many years then after that we continued to practice psychology and in the late 1990s there was a group of scientifically oriented psychologists who also had this interest on all things positive about human beings. And They said why do we have to actually have this emphasis on the negative kinds of approaches to studying human behavior. Why can't we be focusing on human potential and things like happiness and uh, compassion and warmth and the good things about personality? And that culminated in an article that corresponded with the presidency and the American Psychological Association of Martin Seligman. And Martin Seligman and a colleague uh, by the name of Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi wrote an article that was published in the American Psychological Association, uh, the American Psychologist, in 1999 that was about positive psychology, calling for this new movement in the field of psychology. Since then, there has been massive growth in this one particular area, but that focus is on the individual. When I administer a survey as a psychologist, 
I'm looking at what's going on inside you privately as you're thinking. I'm looking at your individual behavior in relation to the environment, your immediate environment. I'm not looking at the larger world and how that impacts you. So that's a very distinct movement in this overall field of happiness. There's also these movements that are more oriented toward economic well-being. And in fact, you might see, if you take the, the survey through the Happiness Alliance, you'll see there's a lot of emphasis on um, how much time you're spending at work and what's your income level. And things that are maybe more immediate in your environment, but are also much more about social well-being, such as the social support you get from your community and uh, your family life, things like this. But there's definitely an emphasis on the environment and the direct impact of that environment or the effect of that environment from a, a kind of relatively close area to a really, really wide area, like your entire government. How does your government affect your happiness? Well, that's obviously distinct from this field of psychology that goes in and says, okay, I want you to answer some questions about you, about your history, about what you're thinking, what you're doing right now. So on their face, they look like separate movements. But I think people are realizing that these two movements, one of which is a highly ecological environmental movement and a policy, economic policy driven movement, and another one which is based on the individual, which is what the whole field of psychology is based on. They're not truly distinct because even as a psychologist, I look at things from an ecological standpoint. I look at things in the person's environment that affect them most immediately, such as um, my parents, my wife, my, my son, people who are close to me, to then concentric circles that go farther and farther out. I look then at my neighborhood. I look then at my, my community, the neighborhood, the community that I live in. I look at the state and how that government works. And I look at my nation. And that is really the ecological systems view of Braun von Brenner, which is, is also, a, he's also a psychologist. So the way I see it is that eventually these movements, which started out maybe as distinct movements, will all kind of come together. Because when we're studying the effect of certain policies in a particular government, and how some people, for example, in Denmark, rate themselves as much happier than people in some other country, especially a developing country, then there's something psychological that is going on there, even though we're talking about something that is also highly economic and very global at a very macro level. That is still psychological phenomena from my perspective. <laughs>